Since 29th of May, when Mr. Bola Ahmed Tinubu was inaugurated as the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, during which he announced the removal of subsidy of petrol, the pump price has tripled from about 200 naira to over 600 naira, leading to the increase in the prices of goods and services. This obviously has affected the economic situation of lots of Nigerians, and in response, the Nigerian Labour Congress embarked on a two-day warning strike on Tuesday, September 5, to protest the government's removal of fuel subsidy and promise an indefinite strike if the situation persists. Although the federal workers still await the fulfillment of the promise made by President Balatinubu to review salaries upwards, some state governments rolled out palliatives to cushion the effect of the subsidy removal. In the meantime, the meeting between the federal government and the Nigerian Labour Congress NLC to avert an indefinite strike ended in a deadlock, while the federal government expresses worry over the economic impact of another strike on the nation's economy. The labour union demands wage award, among other things, to cushion the effect of the subsidy removal. How can Nigeria Labour Congress reach equilibrium of this matter, on this matter to avert the impending strike. Nigeria today seeks answers to this and as it discusses matters arising from the impending labor indefinite strike. I am your carrier, Clinton. Welcome to Nigeria today. Joining me in the studio to discuss impending labor indefinite strike is a public affairs analyst, John Desmond. You're you. welcome to Nigeria today. Thank you for having me here, studio. Also joining us uh, uh, via Zoom is another public affairs analyst, Jide Ujo. It's always a pleasure to have you with us on the program. Ugeria, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Good evening, Nigerians. I'll start with you, uh, John. The uh, Nigerian Labour Congress is, you know, considering an indefinite strike, uh, citing non fulfillment of a promise made by, on the part of the government. Now, is this the solution? Well, strike is not a solution to the to negotiation, but of course they have their right. And uh, already the president has hinted the nations that those things that the labor union are asking for is in pipeline and they are working on it. So the only way now to sort out and to solve and to come to a very reasonable conclusion is by returning back to the negotiating table. Now embarking on strike would disturb the process. Already the nation is already handicapped with a lot of challenges. Striking now at this moment will not solve the problem. And for us not to complicate the matter, it is better to go back to the table and negotiate you know, the shortest means of getting out of the, the, the jam lock that the removal of, subsidy, of a petroleum subsidy has brought to the nation. Now, Jide, we, we are talking about a total uh a system or let's like, say economic shutdown. Now considering the fact that uh, the federal government is still open to talks, is this uh, indefinite impending or this indefinite, this uh, considering or this indefinite strike that intend to you know embark upon, is it not uh, a little bit an extreme action? Well, okay, you may say it's an extreme action, but an extreme um action demands an extreme solution um when the subsidy was removed on may 29 2023 uh, the federal government set up a tripartite committee and they had a term of reference and the agreement was that this whole issue will be resolved within two months which is eight weeks. It's been more than 100 days that the president is in power, and not much uh, seems to have been achieved. I wouldn't say nothing has been achieved, but in terms of what the 
uh, Nigeria Labour Congress and the, the um, Trade Union Congress is uh, demanding, um, many of them has not been addressed. The issue of wage award, the issue of task exemption, the issue of CNG buses, and then, you know, general welfare packages for the Nigerian workers has not been uh, met. And if you say you are going to trash out an issue within eight weeks, and it's going to um, 14 weeks now, and nothing uh, concrete has been achieved, uh, then uh, I wouldn't blame the NLC and TUC for wanting to go on strike. What I would just uh, appeal to them to do is to give government more time, given the fact that Mr. President is not in the country. Recall that when they went on protest, um, was it in July or early August, um, when they went on street protest, the Mr. President, at a very short notice, met with the leaders of the um, NUC, uh, NLC, TUC, and Pengasa, and um, made some commitments. Uh, since that time, the president hasn't met with them. Of course, um, in the course of time, we now have um, ministers' inauguration. So we have two ministers uh, manning the Ministry of um, Labor and Employment. But um, they have only delegated authority. So they have to report back to the president. Uh, what we read in the papers is that the Minister of Labor and, and Employment, um, Mr. Simon Lalong Esquire, uh, did meet with the vice president yesterday. But what they have agreed on is not made known to the public. Meanwhile, the uh, 21 days notice given by the NLC expires tomorrow. Uh, so we can only make appeal for uh, NLC to give more time. And we should commend the Nigeria labor unions because if not for, it, for their effort, today we will have been buying a, a liter of petrol for as much as 800, 900 naira per liter. Remember that um, in the course of time, the price of uh, PMS rose from about 210 to 610 now. And given the exchange rates, volatility, and all the issues around landing costs and, and logistics, if the NLC hasn't threatened that they will not uh, allow for further increase in the price of PMS, um, particularly if the issue of PMS have been left to market forces to determine, uh, you and I would definitely have been paying a lot more than what we currently pay for a liter of PMS. So we should commend them for intervening on behalf of the general masses, but we can only appeal to them not to go on indefinite strike at this point because it will hurt the economy. I recall that the two-day uh, two strike they embarked on uh, early last week or two weeks ago, uh, it, it impacted negatively on those of us in Abuja because there was shorting, shutdown of the electricity corporation. And so we didn't have lights and all the banks and other financial institutions also didn't work. So in the light of excruciating pain that their indefinite strike will bring on the general masses whom they are fighting for, including the workers who, who just plead with them to allow the president to return to the country so that he can personally chair meeting where this issue can be laid to rest. We have heard that the award is on the way, um, but there has not been any definite pronouncement ab uh, about that. But um, we should just look at it both sides that government has been full dragging and needs to speed up things to be done. Thank you very much. Now, uh, John, the, the Minister of uh, Labour and Employment, uh, Mr. Simon Lalong, had um, you know, said the meeting will, of course, will yield a positive result. He expressed optimism, but at the end of the day, it appears uh, it ended in a deadlock. Now, what would be your suggestion as to how the uh, strike could be averted at this point? Of course, there are a few things that are still on the table. And the, the major of it is the salary review. And uh, this is a constitutional matter. Uh, the, 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 whole, the, you know, the whole system has to agree on a certain amount. And uh, just as uh, GD has just said, the president is not in town. 
uh, negotiation is ongoing. So to avert the strike on the side of the federal government, by now, as he said, we should have an average tentative, you know, a kind of amount that uh, we are sure we can pay for the next few years while the economic improve so that that can be made uh, available to the NLC, you know, so that they can go back to their congresses and agree and come back, you know, to avert the total shutdown on Nigeria. Then on the side of NLC, they should also appreciate the effort of the president so far. It's a lot of things on the table. Apart from the salary increase, the wage merge or the wage uh, award, award. award. Mm -hmm. governments within the shortest period has released palliative. What you see going on in the state is as a result of the, uh, the five billion given to the state. The president, in his own wisdom, also look, let's support our people with food materials. Give each state about five trailer loads of rice, you know. So the remaining one, it's what needs to be negotiated holistically. Is there any amount the NLC is actually looking onto? Because let's not look that we are not part of the economy. We are all part of the economy. We know what the nation can afford at this moment. And is there any amount that government is also looking at so that we can come to a compromise, come to conclusion and begin to move the nation forward? All right, let's pause here for a break. Uh, we'll be back uh, in a moment. Going on the drawing board is what matters. Not strike will never solve the problem because it has never. Dialogue should be the best solution where uh, agreement could be reached. Well, uh, probably let it be a kind of with action, follow up with action, because Nigerians have lost confidence on the Nigerian Labour Congress. So the Labour Congress need to also find a st systematic strategy to bring back that loss to glory to rebuild the confidence, remobilize the public, and remobilize the institutions and even the other subsector of the labor. You can see that TUC didn't uh, support the strike uh, action. And then definitely uh, even the public have not really done well. My feeling when I hear that NSC wants to embark on strike. Okay. Yes. My feeling is whether the strike is going to be effective, whether NSC is a toothless dog who can only back but cannot bite because government is too powerful. Welcome back. This is still Nigeria today, and we're looking at impending in, uh, indefinite strike by the NLC. Now, today you had the reaction of Nigerians there, and um, some had uh, said, uh, <laughs> "Will it be effective? And uh, <laughs> is this a way to can the NLC rebuild the confidence of the people?" Now, could it be that they are trying to, you know, build back the confidence of the people, you know, by going on this uh, indefinite strike? Well, um, we must, we must um, say that this is not just about Nigerian labor unions. They are working together with the civil society organizations. And like one of the people in the Vox Pop said, uh, whether the Nigerian labor unions will be able to take on government, uh, because government has within his powers, power to uh, blackmail. And uh, they've done that in the past, saying that the uh, activities of the labor unions are politically motivated, given the fact that the uh, NLC also has a political party who filled that candidate in the last, uh, uh, candidates in the last elections. But we need to look beyond partisan interest. This is about the whole essence of the, the country. Much as I empathize with the president, Ashwa uh, Dubala Ahmed Tinubu, he has to also understand that as much as we are willing and ready to, to tighten our belts, we haven't seen much on the part of people in government doing say, uh, because they still ride in posh cars. Uh, they are still living in posh buildings. 
I've not had any of them saying that they are taking a cut in their salaries and allowances. So um, for the ordinary masses whose businesses have been impacted negatively, who do not, who have lost their means of livelihood or who could no longer afford to have a meal, and they are looking up to NLC and the other labor unions to help them pressurize governments to do something. And my brother there in the studio talked about the five billion naira palliative fund. He should remember that 48% of that sum is a loan and only 52% is a grant. And what is five, five billion uh, out of a country of over 200 million? Uh, assuming without conceding that we even use the entire five billion to buy grains, how many people within a state can benefit? Uh, we have seen in you know, those states fights between a world chairman and a commissioner leading to a fracas in which the commissioner was injured over issues of distribution of palliative. We've seen trending videos of a whole world getting one bag of rice that will be shared to how many hundreds or thousands of people. So what we are saying is that if the president said he has in two months saved over one trillion from petrol subsidy, I think what should have been budgeted for economic relief pa packages should be over should be more than that 500 billion. However, part of what NLC and TUC is asking for is the uh, uh, you know, speeding up of the release of the micro and small medium enterprises loan that the president has pledged that they were going to give to small and medium enterprises. All of this needs to be done in a speedy manner because life is of essence here. You know, um, people have been bearing with this harsh economic uh, climbing. This month, September, many parents could no longer pay their children and world school fees because of the rising cost of, of living. Uh, many people could no longer pay rent. Many people could no longer afford to go to the hospital because of the exorbitant cost. So government needs to show more empathy. And like I said, the leadership from president to governors to ministers to commissioners to local government chairperson. We want to see them uh, showing more than they are doing now. They should show more empathy or, uh, to the masses about you know, cutting down their own cost of uh, governance uh, substantially so that we know that they also feel a pinch. There is not for them to sermonize that they feel a pinch. Let us see that they actually feel it uh, by cutting down the cost of governance substantially. Let's see them donate their salaries or uh, you know, take a cut in their salaries and allowances, reduce their convoys, you know, and, and other cost-saving measures so that the masses will know that, yes, we have leaders who really show uh, empathy, not situations where we have National Assembly, uh, you know, he are marking 40 billion to buy Porsche cars as official car, and uh, that is in the media space whether that is true or not. If it is true, I don't think this is the right time for them to go out with such purchases. Um, we are also talking of 70 billion that they have also earmarked for the renovation of the National Assembly complex. Now, this thank is you very much, the, Judy. Let, let's also give uh, John the opportunity to react to the, uh, <laughs> to the, uh, the Vox Bob there, to, you know, the, the, uh, some, it has people, or will they have people actually lost confidence in the NLC? You know, the, 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 the strength of NLC is not as usual as it used to be during the days of uh, Adams or Shomali. And uh, a lot of issues has come up that uh, the NLC couldn't stand for the people. Uh, but that doesn't mean we have lost confidence in them, no. We've not lost confidence in them. We still believe in them. And uh, uh, they are the leadership of Nigerian labor forces. And, uh, because we here we, we are also asking them to understand and go to the negotiation table. Yes, so they, they, they will, because the, 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 the <laughs> Minister for Labor mm -hmm. is calling them. And he has a lot to offer 
Nigerians through them. So going on strike will not solve the problem. Returning back to the negotiation table will help us to see the needs and attend to it speedily so that the masses can get you know, the, the evidence of renewal hope of President uh, Tinubu. Okay, and now, uh, Jide, the, the, you know, um, as wonderful or as uh, acceptable as the demands of the NLC might seem to the public servant, you know, it might also come with the costs because they've talked about upward review, you know, wage, award, and all of that. Now, some uh, public analysts have argued that the public service is overpopulated. Now, if the public service, according to the argument, is overpopulated, now, with all these uh, demands, don't you think uh, that uh, it will lead to maybe somewhat of downsizing to ensure that these uh, monies are being, you know, uh, paid? Because if the government does not have enough, like we rightly said, the economy now is not really as, uh, you know, as wonderful as we would uh, want it. We are still, the present administration is still working it, working it out. So I, I want to hear your thought on this. Because right now, we're still dealing with uh, in, uh, the high level of unemployment. Th thank you, Kiria. You see, um, we should commend government for not downsizing, at least the federal government, even under the Buhari administration, in spite of the economy downturns, Buhari never sacked any worker, except for disciplinary measure. And that is very good because um, a sack of one worker means you have taken food off the table for over 10 people. However, uh, the fact that um, if, if the labor unions press too much, government may result to downsizing or sack of some workers, uh, should not prevent them from fighting for their rights. It's part of the ILO Convention, that's the International Labor Organization, for workers to protest for workers to go on industrial action. So it's, it's not a privilege, it's a right. What we can just do is to appeal to the labor unions to give government more time. Uh, when you have a right and not a privilege, it shows that if you do it, everyone will not fall. We cannot because uh, oh, government may resort to downsizing of work, workers. Uh, I tell you for free, Ukeria, as we speak, the Nigerian civil service is still grossly underpopulated. Look at the medical sector. How many doctors and nurses have been employed to replace those who have jackpot, those who have left the shores of this country? How many? You had a case in Lagos where one doctor allegedly worked for 72, 72 hours and uh, eventually slumped in the church and died. You know, that's to tell you that workers are not even enough. Even in teaching service, there are no enough teachers. So what, what, on what basis will you want to rationalize or downsize work? Because there have not been um, recruitment uh, in the last few years. So um, we should just join NLC, um, join and um, join NLC to temper justice with mercy allow for the president to return and meet with the president to get a concrete, decisive action plan. Wage award does not need constitutional alteration. Wage award is like the award that workers got in 1975. That one can be done unilaterally, just like what Thank you very much. I really uh, wish we had more time for you to you know, tell us more. Well, that's it uh, on Nigeria Today. I would like to appreciate uh, my guest, John Desmond, for uh, he's a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much for being part of the program. Thank you. Okay, yeah. And also a very big thank you to Jide Ojo, a public affairs analyst also. Thank you for honoring our invitation. It's my pleasure. Do enjoy your weekend. And it's been wonderful having you with us. Don't forget Nigeria Today, uh, weekdays and that's at 7.30 p.m. on NTU News 24. You can also watch this and other episodes on www.youtube.com slash NTU News 24 Hub. Once again, thank you for watching. I am your carrier, Clinton. Goodbye.
your competitors and to increase your performance all the while you are recruiting. You are perfectly correct. While we do think we can match the best performers to a T, we are not no fools. We can't expect to win the same with no advantage. Go beyond your speed and technique to verify. 